It was more than shocked. Uh, we were hurt. Uh, we felt that there was being a complete disservice done to our daughter, who is still missing. And that is the thing which is hardest to actually forgive. Uh, there was no regard for that. There's no regard for the feelings of both Kate and myself, uh, our other children, in fact, our wider extended family. Do you think you were naive? I, it, of course we were naive in the, t in the sense that we have never been exposed to the media previously. And uh, I think, though, that we were better protected than many, many Jeremy. But then you had this entire media circus. I agree, it was a circus camped out around you, but you collaborated with them when it was convenient to you, didn't you? I mean, we would announce photo calls and that whether or not you'd be speaking that day or whether maybe tomorrow or the day after. I mean, do you, do you think to some degree you, you reaped a whirlwind? We reaped a whirlwind? No. <coughs> I presume you're uh, taking a very uh, much a devil's advocate's resp um, position here in what you're doing. We had very clear objectives what we wanted and any parents would take the opportunity of trying to get information into the investigation that might help find their daughter. And that's what our clear objectives were. Um, I think the one thing we probably do slightly differently is the, the dividing line between when does media covering the story uh, on a daily basis, which happened, and I uh, did discuss today about the aspect of when um, we finished our trips, uh, particularly to Germany Hall in Morocco, where we felt there might be information relevant. We stayed on in Portugal because uh, emotionally we were not ready to leave and we felt closest to Madeline there. And we fully expected at that point the media attention to die down, and, and it didn't. And I think with hindsight, we probably should have drawn a much clearer line in the sand there, even about being photographed. We, the consumer, of course, see this scrum of photographers and cameramen and reporters surrounding a couple to whom a terrible thing has happened. And we only see it from one side, but what's it like when you're on the other side? It's very intimidating, uh, particularly when you've never experienced anything like that before. And I have to say, when I came back from the police station uh, on Friday the 4th of May and saw the mass of media uh, internationally gathered, I, you know, it filled the prospect of having them um, doorstepping, invading your privacy, raking up anything from you know, your school days to potentially university, to things that have absolutely no relevance in the ongoing search, filled me with dread. Do you draw a lesson about what ought to be done? I mean, it's a very broad question, but do you draw a lesson? I mean, the, the, simplistically, and it is simplistic because the regulation and the loss and le surrounding it and self-regulation is clearly quite complex. But what we would call for is some move, and if it is a backward step, we want more responsible reporting and we want accountability for what's written, particularly when it has the potential to seriously damage uh, people's lives. And I don't know how a family who were less supported than we were could have coped. Because we had points very, very close to completely breaking. Can you tell us finally what's happening with the search for Madeline now? I think the one thing today we would like to re-emphasise is the search for Madeline is very much ongoing. Um, we have uh, a lot of activity going on behind the scenes. Uh, we will come public with the activity when we feel we need more information in a specific area. But uh, Madeline's fund is uh, funding an ongoing search. We're very, very keen to work with the authorities both here and in Portugal uh, to try at the very, very least find Madeline or find who took her. Jeremy Ken, thank you. Thank you.